Hello, and welcome back to my channel. It's been a minute since my last video. It was starting to feel like I was making a video just because it was Tuesday, and not because I had something really important to say. I try to really respect your time and not make a new video just because I managed to bolt a couple new parts together. I'm happy to say the parts that I received from PCBWay went together really nicely. As expected, there was a bit of filing on the mating surface to get things to fit just right. But I'll be told the fitting process went pretty quickly. The aluminum is a bit soft, but should be okay as a long-term material. Really, only time and continued use will tell. But unless something dramatic happens, I think the fingers themselves, from the mounting rails to the distals, are in their final revision. Before my break, I was working on a way of preventing the fingers from back driving as long as a load was being applied to the finger. With my current device, I was achieving the lockup in the winder. I was using a balance spring to separate a pair of hardened cleats that would engage once there was about 10 pounds of force trying to open up the fingers. After a bunch of trial and error, I was finally able to get reliable, repeatable results with this setup. Although I was able to get it to work, this method did have a couple downsides. First, the increased part count. This lock required an additional eight parts. And while that isn't the end of the world, it also brought all the little fiddly issues present when relying on a balance spring. If there's any real hope of elevating this thing from the level of a project to that of a product, I need to get rid of all the extra parts along with anything that isn't 100% reliable. Last thing I want to do is get a bunch of these kits out in the wild just to discover that there's some issue related to a super special spring. After a bit of contemplation, I realized a novel way of getting the fingers to lock under load. The principle is to use the exterior side of the distals to carry the load instead of the palmer side of the fingers as you would with a non-locking grip. The major advantage of this method is that with the exception of extending the length of the link pin of the distal, no extra parts are required. The lockup is achieved with the internal geometry already in place within the finger. The way the new setup works is when the finger's in its closed position, the distal pin on the distal link locks up to the body of the medial. This lockup prevents the pins of the distal link from being aligned with the hinge pins of the distal. So this pin, this pin, and this pin. As long as the three pins are held at at least seven degrees shy of alignment, the finger is able to return from the extended position once the load is removed. Anything less than that, and the finger isn't able to return solely from the force of the return spring. This method is similar to how a pair of vice grips work, with the major difference being that in the case of the vice grip, once the locking linkage rotates past the alignment plane, the input force can be removed, and until the linkage is rotated back past across the plane, the clamp remains locked. Whereas with my setup, the linkage is limited just shy of that plane, and a small load needs to be continuously applied to the input lever, which in this case is the distal, in order to keep the finger from back driving. The benefit that I'm seeing by using this method to lock up the finger is it allows me to simplify the winder, decreasing not only the part count of the assembly, but also decrease the overall height of the assembly by almost a quarter of an inch. I've also been working on a new Gaffney plate that incorporates a miniature cartoid locking mechanism that when completed will allow the user to lock the ring and pinky in either the open or closed position by moving the hand laterally with the fingers either open or closed, opposite of the motion that would normally splay the fingers. So from zero, positive motion or abduction splays the fingers and negative motion or adduction will click the cartoid lock, either catching or releasing the sprocket roller on the winder. This roller is different from the others used in the winder. It has three sprocket teeth that tie the winder chain to the rotation of this roller. There's a pin that protrudes on the top of the roller, and by catching the pin either before or after the locking paw, it'll lock the ring and pinky fingers in either the extended or closed position. This is something I've been working on for a bit, and I'm sure it'll turn out to be a super useful feature once I get it dialed in. I've also been working on putting together a thing with the company Cerakote. They produce a low friction, corrosion inhibiting coating that's well known within the firearms community. 
The idea right now is to use their micro slick coating on the hinge pins and use their oven cure coating to color the rest of the prosthetic. Cerakote is a super durable coating with great wear resistance and amazing adhesion if properly prepped and applied. This will be a great option for people who are looking for something different than the raw or polished aluminum look. Another thing that I've been working on is adding an interface to the base plate of the winder to the gaffney and mounting rails of the fingers. This interface makes it to where all three of the assemblies, the fingers, the winder, and the gaffney, self-align and bolt together, taking all the guesswork out of their positional relationship. This should make fitting everything to the socket a much simpler process. Basically, I'm trying to make everything kind of Lego together. I still need to actually prove out the new winder and Gaffney assemblies, and then send the files to PCBWay and have them make first articles. But once that's done, I'll be ready to start the arduous process of looking for funding to make sure that this can be built out in the wild. If the process works out, I'll be ready to start marketing the project through PCBWay's website. This kind of lets you know where I am on the project. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Thanks for watching.